anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And the word of the Lord is blessed as you take your seats. Won't you take your seats entertaining this rallying cry? If you are an individual that believes in recording stuff for the record, I want you to write this down. Write this down on Saturday, November 4th, 2023. Living Witness Ministries declares that it's a new day. Amen. Come on. It's a new see y'all ain't get excited about that. When Amen. the Lord dropped this in my spirit, I'm like, oh, okay, I felt some. It's a new day. Amen. Keep always excited about it. It's a new day. It's a new day. Yes, it is. And when you hear that declare, most people, when they say it's a new day, they're saying it as a sense, in a sense of being triumphant, meaning they came out of a day that usually wasn't a good day. Yeah. They came out of a season that usually was a struggle. That's right. They came out of a season where there might have been conflict, where there might have been confusion, where there might have been pain, there could have been some loss, could have been some situations and circumstances. There might be some things that are binding you up that won't allow you to be the creature that God created you to be. And but as I as I listened to this, Holy Spirit began to minister to me. That's the world today. Yes, That's the community that you're in today. That's your assignment in this community today. Yes. Your assignment is to go into the community and let them know and declare and decree just like you do after you've had a bad day. You know what? I know that you might be going through at home. You know what? That addiction might be getting the better of you. You know what? Your kids might be out of control. You know what? You might have got a bad word from a doctor, but I'm here to let you know that it's a new day. It's a new day. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It, it ain't working like it was. Thank you, Jesus. No more. And when this was written, this, this passage of scripture was written in the midst of a letter to a church that needed a new day. Yes. Church that was divided. Yes. Church that was more concerned with the me's than reaching the weeds. Church that was more concerned with grandstanding. They're doing great works yes, for amen. the master. Sounds a lot like a lot of churches today. Amen. Yes. Amen. And what God is saying to the church, because we're in the midst of a study on the church. Mm -hmm. If you read and look at the signs of the times, my children, you realize that playtime is over. Yes, you realize that it's a new day. You realize that, that, that the time for all the other stuff is gone. It's not about the number of clicks. It's not a, about the number of likes. It's yeah. not about how much yeah. money you got in the bank. What it's about is what have you done to lift me up late? That's right, son. Yes, God. What have you done you, to lead somebody mm. to me? Yes, yes God. Thank you, Lord. What have you done to be for us here, as our name implies? What have you done to be a living witness to somebody? Hallelujah. You tell me the last time that somebody looked at something that was inanimate for direction. And I'll tell you the last time that that individual did something productive. Come on. Because it takes a special type of individual to find inspiration in something that has no life. Come on. But the word lets us know that, that, that and Jesus said that, I, that I've come. That you might have what? Life. Yes. And that what? More, More abundantly. Yes. Guess what? That don't just mean I'm massing up a whole bunch of stuff. Come on. Come on. Come on. What that means is getting out and doing the work of ministry. Amen. Amen. That means getting out and helping others understand yes, that there's a new day. Come on. Yes. Amen. 
See, the alarm clock is going off louder in the spirit than it ever has yes, before. Yes, right. it is. Yes, it is. We talk about, we just went through the checklist. We just went through it. We, we talked about it about three weeks ago in Bible study about the signs of, of, of the Lord's coming, the things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Wars and rumors of wars. Check. Mm -hmm. Fathers against sons. Yep. Uh -huh. Mothers against daughters. Yep. You got it. You know, the world getting more and more corrupt. Absolutely. Yes. The checklist is being marked off literally in front of our eyes. Yet yes. many individuals that profess the name of Jesus Christ are sleepwalking through the whole endeavor. Say wondering that, what's going that. on and thinking, I got to worry about me, mine, and ours. Not realizing. Doing the opposite of what I did in my story. Not realizing that they forgot something at home. They yes. forgot the power of the Holy Ghost yes. at home. They yes. forgot their mandate back at home. They forgot their mission back at home. They forgot that they're underneath the Great Commission. Jesus, Jesus help us out. They left Jesus at home. Because mm. it's a great co-mission. Yes, co is a prefix that means with. Jesus said, look, this is what I need you to do, but I'm not just sending you out there. That's right. I'm going with you. Yes, yes God. Yes. But here's a kick. Yes. If you remember way, 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 way back in Genesis, mm -hmm. when the fruit that wasn't supposed to be eaten was eaten. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember what tree that fruit was from? Mm -hmm. That tree was that, that that fruit was from the tree of the catch, just the knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Which meant that now we had the capacity to rationalize and choose. That's right. Which means coming all the way, 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 way back to what I just said. The reason why I was a great commission is because Jesus didn't forget what happened in the garden. Come on. He didn't forget that you have the right to choose. Mm -hmm. So each and every day you go out and do what you do. You make a choice. You're either taking me with you wherever you go or you're leaving me at home. And far too many of us that profess the name of Christ are walking in a great area that doesn't exist. That's right. That's right. But walking around compromised. Yes, God. I forgot what administration it was. Maybe the Reagan administration they were talking about when this whole spy thing broke. Mm -hmm. Talking about compromise. Russia's compromised. Everything is compromised. Compromise. I think it might have been the Reagan administration because that's where the whole trust but verify came along. Mm -hmm. And there are far too many of us that have said yes to Jesus that are saying, well, Lord, I trust you. But I need to see this, this, and this happen in order to know that it's he. That's right. Help us God. Help us God. But the word says that we walk by faith and not by sight. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it's the evidence of things not seen. Which means if I'm going to stand on what I'm hoping for and believe what I'm not seeing, then I've got to make the choice. Yes, God. Yes, God. To trust God and bring him with me. Yes. And what's happening is that the church is not doing that in here, which is why Paul had to come back and write another letter. Because two is the number of witnesses. He's like, look, I need to let you know again that God is serious about this. Yes. He's serious about this because it's a new day. Yes. And church, we need you, and he's saying the same to us, thing to us today. We need you to actively be about yes, our Father's business. Yes. See, time is out for you to just be running around doing whatever you do That's and leaving right. him at home. That's right. That's right. Can he do it from where he is? Absolutely, he can do it from where he is. But you know what he needs? He needs you because, like I said before, the only feet he has is yours. The only hands he has is yours. The only voice he has is yours. The only mind he has is yours. And it's not that he can't do it. But he wants his will to line up with our will. Yes, God. And that's why I said it's a new day because as the Lord began to show me the reason and show me the scope of the vision, I, I was trying to make it make sense in my natural mind and it was it, it had me so just, just frustrated up in knots, uh, uh, tied up in knots, I, I just couldn't do it. And he said it's not for you to understand, it's for you to trust me. Lean not to your own understanding and acknowledge me in all of your ways. Don't worry about who don't understand. That's right. Don't worry about who calls you crazy. Come on. Don't worry about who says it can't be done. Yes. Because while they're saying it can't be done, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Yes. 
And he's doing a new thing in this community starting tonight. He's doing a new thing in this community starting right now. He's doing a new thing in this community starting with our belief in what God is doing. He's doing a new thing in this region right now. Because we're here. There's a law in real estate called a law of equal access. Real estate attorney broke. Real estate attorney broke it down one day on the show, and it basically goes like this: If you have a piece of property, even one thing, a piece of clothing, in an area that's been designated for somebody else, and you have just cause to have access to it, legally you have to have a way in to access what you need and a way out. It works the same way in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. One light, one point of light, one individual is sold out for Christ. One individual that's walking by faith and not by sight spiritually gives God access mm -hmm. to that region. That's yeah. good. That's good. Because we're here, church, yeah. the law of equal access yeah. says yeah. that we're going to make a difference in the community. Yeah. The law of equal access says somebody out there is going to get saved. The law of equal access says somebody's going to be delivered. Somebody's going to be healed. Somebody's marriage is going to be saved. Yeah. Somebody's child is going to be kept out of jail. Yes. That's the good news. But here's why this message says it's a new day and it has to start with us. Here's the bad news. One sin in your life gives the enemy the right, That's right. Mm -hmm. to be there to trip you up. That's right. One time for getting him at home yes. gives the enemy the right to come in and run a rough shot all in your plans. Yes. One slip of the tongue and slipping back into the carnal side well. gives the enemy the right to take what you said and run left with That's it. That's right. And paint a whole alternate universe. Come on, on y'all saw the Avengers, right? The whole time you turn the stone and it looks like that. That's what the devil does. He tries to make things appear as though they're one way. Yes. When God is steadily saying, that's not what it is. But the reason why a lot of times we don't hear it is because God let us know from Jump Street, I speak in a still small voice. Mm. You're not going to hear me yelling. Come on. Because if I yell, you wouldn't be able to stand it. That's right. It's a still, small voice. That's why the world calls noise that don't really mean nothing white noise. Come on. They try to mask it as this is a good thing. No, white no, noise not. is not a good That's thing. Right. That's right. White noise is designed to keep you from concentrating. That's right. White noise is designed to keep your thoughts far from him. That's right. He's found in the midst of peace and tranquility. Yes, and God yeah. desires us yeah. to set that. And what we have to do yeah. is we have to speak on our jobs. We have to speak in our homes. We got to speak around our loved ones. We got to yes, speak around do. people. Look, it's a new day. We're not doing all this crazy stuff right now. Right. I don't care how much you yes. like to hear this yes. or that. I don't care how much you like hip hop. Yes. I'm over here trying to get my word in. I can't tell you to turn it off. But what I can do is remove myself from the situation. Yes. Catch this. I'm going to make the choice to yes. not plug into where you are. And I'm going to plug in to a higher frequency. Yes, yes. Because God is saying that I got to come up higher. Yes. And he needs me to come up higher because the perspective I got to have is the same perspective that he has. Amen. And the perspective that he has, which is why he said that we got to actively be about our father's business, we got to be about our father's business because the day of renewal is here. Amen. Yes, God. It ain't coming no more. It's, it's here. here. Yes. It's here. It's here God. This passage of scripture makes it crystal clear that it's here. Because in our text, what Paul is doing here is that he's appealing to the church. He's talking to the church, y'all. Right. Right. He's pe appealing to the church to focus less on things that divide them and more on the thing. And notice I said thing, one thing, mm -hmm. that unites them, which is salvation yes. through Christ. Yes. We got all these denominations running around here. More concerned with the, the D aspect of denomination. Mm -hmm. Because unbeknownst to them, while they're nominating people to be bishop this and apostle that yes. and prophet this and, 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 and pastor so and so and superintendent so and so and this and that and the third, not that I'm against leadership and structure because I'm not. That's right. 
But we got to remember the word says that there's still one Lord, yes, on, right. one faith, yes. one baptism, yes. one God that's above all. Yes. Stop right there, above all. Above You're all. not the supreme bishop or nothing. He's above you, yes. above yes. all. Yes. And in all, catch this, and working through oh. you all. Yes. Which means if we're living that way, we've got the right and capacity and the equal access to speak to our community and say, change has come yes. to the world. Yes, yes. Change has come to the south side. Yes. Change has come yes. to this region. Change has come to people's lives. Yes, stop. But that means we got to change from the inside out. Yes, God. And what this is saying here is that Christians are not to evaluate people based on mere physical appearance. Come on, man. For a host of reasons. Come on. But primarily because this flesh is designed to lie to us. Yes. That's right. This flesh, if not put under subjection, yes. is designed to keep us in a state of war yes. with God. Yes. Pastor, what are you talking about? You go back and look at the word. It says way, 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 way back in Genesis. And what's going to happen is, and I'm paraphrasing, the serpent, you might bite the heel, mm -hmm. but the heel is ultimately going to crush your head. That's right. Mm -hmm. But while that ultimately is happening, this is going to be going on. Because the word goes this way, that the spirit is always at enmity or at war with the flesh. That's right. That's right. And the reason why God is saying it's a new day is that he needs the church to stop sleepwalking through Jesus, Jesus. This, 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 this disagreement. Come on. Yes, Amen. Stop sleepwalking through this conflict. Come on. Yes. Because while we're sleepwalking through this conflict, thinking it'll just go away, there are people out there that are overdosing. There are people out there that are dying. There are people out there that are driving through buildings. There are people out there that are saying that they don't believe God. They've gotten so bold that they'll go on Christian TV and stand ten toes ten toes down on the fact that I don't believe God, and I bet you can't even convince me. And the sad part about it. I'm saying, and I'm listening to this, I'm like, man, if I wasn't saying, I wouldn't even believe you. Come on. And you, the host of the show on a Christian station. Yes, this is the problem. This is the problem that Paul was addressing here. Right. And what he needs us to do, and what he said here is that he needs us to remember, remember that as believers, we've been born again of imperishable seed. That means it don't expire. That's Jesus. right. We've been born again of a seed that's always in season, that's always in style, always that's in always season. appropriate, yeah. that's always effective, yeah. that's always beneficial, yeah. that's yeah. always in supply, yeah. and that's yeah. always available to us. Yeah. But the reason why we miss out is because we choose not to go to the Lord who is our supply. We choose to speak first and pray later. We choose to lay hands on people the wrong way instead of laying hands on them the right way. Yeah. We choose to use our mouths the wrong way instead of blessing them. Yeah. We choose to what, make, what, what makes this feel good instead of going into all the world and making mm -hmm. disciples. Yes, oh, when that Dunkin' Donuts commercial was out, a little short dude with the mustache, yeah. like 3 in the morning, he had that time to make the donuts. Yeah. Everybody else sleeping. Right. He up doing what he got to do because yes. right. he know them donuts need to get made. That's right. <laughs> yep, let the Lord tap us on the shoulder at 3 o'clock in the morning uh -huh. before we watch the prayer. Uh -huh. If we even answer, yes, if we don't do one of these, right. <laughs> If we answer, we getting up thinking with this. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I wonder what happened. The kids are all right. Okay, the spouse is right there. Maybe some going on. The devil's got to go in a million and five ways. That's still a small voice that's saying, I'm calling you. I'm calling mm -hmm. you. I'm, I'm you. calling you. Yes, yes God. Well, Lord, I know you're calling me. But here, we're getting rationalized. Lord, I know you're calling me, but it's January 7th outside. It's, it's 12 degrees out there. It's mm -hmm. kind of cold in my office. Can I just, can I just lay here and pray? No. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But that's the kind of compromise. Kind because of you got to think that this is a three-way proposition. Yes. A three-way, two-way proposition. I'm going to explain it. Point A, somebody's praying to God. Lord, I need somebody to intercede for me. 
Point B, God's like, bet, I got it, I got somebody. Jesus. Point C, which is us, you need to get up and pray for this person over here. Yes. We help us, help us. Yes. So now there's a breakdown in communication, so it kicks back to here. God is saying, okay, you know what, I hear your prayer, don't worry about it, let me try again. So they plug in again. Help us, Lord. And we roll over again. God's like, okay, fine, it's your choice. I'm going to plug in over here because their prayer's going to get answered. But guess what? Now you're in a situation. Yes, God. And there are far too many of us that are in situations. Yes, we Because we've made wrong choices. Yes, God. And we've made wrong choices based on this. Yes. We've made wrong choices based on I'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work to get that promotion, but I won't get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to pray and ask God for direction God. so that I can get that promotion. I'll get up at 5 o'clock in the morning to take my wife to breakfast, but I won't get up at 4 o'clock in the morning to have Bible study and devotion with you. Yes. We'll do everything to feed this. Help us, help us, help us, God. But what God is doing is he's reminding us my son, my daughter, it's a new day yes, because I brought about a spiritual transformation inside of you. Yes. And you got to understand that your identity is tied to your new birth, not anything that the world gave you. Come on. Right. It's not tied to anything naturally that you That's got. Right. What it's tied to is a realization. Hallelujah. Like Marvin Sapp said, that he's mine and I'm his. Yeah. Yeah. It really doesn't matter what it did because he Loves me for who I am. Yes, God. Yes, and if God. he can accept and love me for who I am, then God, you know what? It's got to be a new day in my thinking. Yes. I got to stop judging people based on how they look. I got to yes. stop judging folks based on how they talk. Yes. I got to stop judging yes. folks based on where they live. I got to yes, stop God. being worried about how dangerous it is. And remember that my Bible says that my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and yes, glory, God. which I found in Christ Jesus. Yes, God. I got to remember the word says that the steps of a good individual are ordered by the Lord. And yes. you can see the lights. Yes. The lights. Mm. Yes, God, I know I just went to sleep at 1 o'clock, but you know what? You call me and I'm delighted. Come so Jesus, I'm going to make the choice yes. Jesus. to run to my press line. Yes, because you could have chose anybody, yes, anywhere in the world, and you chose to plug into my life. Yes, I don't care what time it is, what you need me to do. Yes. That's love. Yes. That's love. Yes. And that's what God is looking for. Yes, God. Help us, God. But we're more concerned in trying to be favorable to man mm. that we're missing what God has yes, for God. us. And he needs us to remember to live Jesus. under that identity that's tied to our new birth because in doing so, that's what's going to change yes. the lives of other people. Yes. See, we ain't got to reinvent the wheel. As we go into the community, we ain't got to reinvent the wheel. I'm hearing it. Right. I've heard about people. Pastor, yo, you. Pastor, y'all going out in the community. Y'all know it's snow up there in Milwaukee. It's cold out there. What y'all going to do out there? The same thing we do. It's 100 degrees out there. Come on. That's right. Only instead of bottled water, we're going to have thermos of hot chocolate. Come on. Come on. We're going to do the same thing when it's cold that's and that we do that's when it's warm. That's right. And while we out there with the traps. Uh-huh. Along with the sandwiches, instead of the juices, we're going to have a little something that's warm. That's it. We're going to have little hand warmers. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Little, 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 hand, little hot hand things. That's what we're going to have. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. We're going to have a little track in there. Come on. And we're going to give these people what they need. That's it. Notice I said what they need, not what they want. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Give the people what they need. That's what they need. Because all have sinned and come short yeah. of God's glory. Right. Come on. Glory. And we all know. We all know because we all been there with money. Amen. When there's something big, the last thing you want to come up is short. That's right. Yes, Don't let somebody owe you a whole bunch of money and you look for that money to take care of something else and they give it to you and you come up short. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care how saved and sanctified you are, we're going to have a problem. <laughs> say that. Notice I didn't say problem, I said problem. Yeah. I ain't got time to put the vowels in. We got problem. That's right. P R B L M, we got problem. Come on. And the situation is, God is saying to us, we got a problem. Yes, we got a problem because you're doing everything except what I'm telling you to do. We got a problem because you're still caught up in this day where your flesh is pleased, but I'm not pleased with you because of your flesh. And I need you to understand that it's a new day. Because the day of renewal is here. And whether you like it or not, you got a role to play as part of the church in that renewal process. 
Because Romans says in the 12th chapter, in the first two verses, I beseech you by the devil, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, that you present your bodies. Not that I got to come and repossess what belongs to me. Come on, come on. But you present yes. your body. Yes, Lord, I know it's the middle of the night, but you know what? You made me in your image. Which means whatever sleep I'm losing, I know you're going to give me what I need. That's right. Amen. And the time that I'm going to spend with Jesus. you. Forgive me for having those thoughts. Come on. And I'm tapping you into my own personal prayer life. Yeah. Forgive me for having those thoughts. Yeah. Forgive me for not feeling like getting up yeah. at. Yeah. Forgive me for grabbing and complaining because. It's not about the quality of folks that's there. It's right. about the quality of your time with him. Because yes. they can't do anything yes. for you anywhere. Right. Hallelujah. So true. Yes. So true. Thank so true. You, Lord. It's not about them. It's about here. This relationship. That's it. The reason why the cross was built the way it was is that had this piece right here not been stable enough mm. to handle what was going on here, mm. the whole thing would have collapsed. We're so concerned with level relationships across the board here and there that our foundational relationship Ooh, with God has suffered Jesus. and you wonder why your life is always cocked to one side. Well, you know what you get when the cross is cocked to one side? You get a letter X. That's why so much stuff is crossed out in your life. Yeah. Yeah. The whole bunch of things crossed out in your life because God has said, I need you to straighten that back up. Yes, so because we got a problem. Jesus. And the problem we got is a sin problem. The problem we got is that I'm having to come and repossess what's mine instead of you presenting it to me. Because when you present it to me, your mindset is right. And this is why it says in verse 2. And don't be conformed to this world because when you in re when God's in repo mode with you, you conform to this world. Yeah. It's my body. I can do what I want to do with it. I can do anything I'm big and bad enough to do. Yeah. Sounds a lot like what we get out there. Mm -hmm. And the scary part about it is folk in the church are like, you know what? Like the song says, it's your thing. You really can. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want to do. Right. I cannot tell you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know the rest of the song. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the problem. God's like, the reason why I got a problem with that is that yes, you can tell them mm -hmm. that they're, they're, they're in no position to sock anybody with anything. That's right. What they're in a position to do is compel them to come to me. You got one job. That's, yeah. job. That's it. One job. That's it. Your job is to go and make disciples. That's right. Not go and make trouble. That's right. Not go and make messes. That's right. Not go and make bills. Mm -hmm. Not go and make bail bondsmen rich. Your job is to go and make disciples. That's why so it says in verse 2, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove. What is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? In other words, that you may prove that no matter how old this all might seem. Because the one thing I find as I work with people in the community, I find that so many of them are frustrated with where they are. Uh -huh. They play a role real well. I'm happy, I'm good, I'm this, I'm that. But if you can catch them backstage, like I said earlier about the play, uh -huh. you can catch them backstage where everything is going on, yes. then that person is sitting in the corner, balled up in the fetal position, crying. And if you can get to them and say, what's going on? You know what? I just didn't think my life would be this way. I'm tired. I don't like this. There's got to be something more. Yes, yes, and every time yes. I hear that, I get convicted in my spirit. I'm like, Lord, that means someone, somewhere that knows you. Yes, God. Forgot this brother, forgot this no. sister at home. Yes. Because remember, the great co-mission is a co-mission. You can choose to take it with you, or you can choose to leave him at home. That's right. It's a new day. We got to stop leaving him at home. That's right. We got to stop being about pleasing this. Amen. And we got to start doing what God is calling us to do. It's not about comfort. Really? It's not about numbers. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. How well we do this thing. We do this thing for God's glory. And the reason why we do this thing for God's glory, we've got to be as nitpicky as accountants are. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Because just like the season of renewal is here, guess what? The season of reconciliation is here too. Yes. You don't believe me? Go back to the checklist. You even see the whole wars and rumors of wars and Bible study. We tore the whole thing down looking at the whole situation in the Middle East. And what we ultimately came to the conclusion was, was that that is nothing more when it's stripped down to its least common denominators. That is nothing more than a family squabble. That's it. 
That is a squabble between two half brothers. That's right. One that was a child of promise, yeah. and one that was a child of opportunity, right. and the one that was a child of opportunity is trying to take that opportunity to slide in the position of promise, and the one that's in the position of promise is taking the opportunity to try to wipe the other one out. And God said it's not about that because if I wanted to be that way, I want to wipe one of y'all out from jump. I need you to learn how to work together. That's good. But we so busy counting wrongs against one another that we forget that Jesus paid it all. Yeah. It don't matter how many times you wrong me and how many times I wronged you. Because news, news flash, you don't get wrong just for nothing. That's right. Hello. You don't. That's right. So while I'm sitting here thinking, well, you know what? I guess I'll be nice to them today because they weren't too bad to me last week. No. No, no, no. That's not how it is. But I'll let you in a little secret. This is how it was in the church at Corinth. That's why Paul had to write a second letter because they didn't get it the first time. That's right. Mm -hmm. So in this letter, he's saying, secondly, that he's driving home a critical point right here. And the point he's driving home is that as believers, we've been born again uh, uh, and, and, and are no longer who we once were Come on. because the old has passed away. And as a result of that, we're called to live in accordance with our new identity. And what this new identity entitles us to are new rights and privileges. Catch this, not because of who we are, but instead because of whose we are. We are. That's it. And that's critical. That's it. My sister's an accountant. Most people don't like accountants. The reason why most people don't like accountants, in the corporate world, they say accountants are very, very anal in their thinking. They're very detail-oriented. But how many of you know it's the details? That trip us up. Jesus put it this way. It's not the big things. I'm paraphrasing. It's the little foxes. That's right. Them little foxes. Them little ankle biter foxes yeah. that get you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And a lot of us are walking around with all kinds of welts and scabs and open wounds on our ankles. And we wonder why we mean and we wonder why we yeah. grouchy. And we yeah. wonder why we ain't got yeah. no patience. And we wonder why we ain't got no long suffering. And we wonder why everything that's coming out of our mouths are curses. And we wonder why we're jealous. And we wonder why we wallowing all in the seven deadly sins. Not even thinking they're deadly because we're taking the opportunity to try to get payback instead of realizing that as children are promised, we're being attacked. Yes, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. And we can't fix it. We got to let God fix it. Amen. Notice I said we have to let God fix it. Because again, way, 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 way back. When we ate the fruit, we were given the knowledge to choose. We got to make the choice to let God come in and be God. That's it. And, and it's a new day because God is saying, time is out for y'all. I done gave y'all ample opportunity yes, to try to do this thing your way. Mm -hmm. I done gave y'all ample opportunity and I had all kinds of moves come through. And the problem is, some people did get saved with those moves, but there are a whole lot of other people that have become hardened of heart and become jaded. Yes, I lived through the move in the 60s for this, and I lived through the prophetic wave, and I lived through the apostolic wave, and I lived through the deliverance wave, and I lived through the name and claim it wave, and I lived through every single wave, but I'm still the same. So I'm in the mindset where I'm at. If God doesn't do it, it's not going to get done, and I don't think God can do it because he couldn't prophesy it out, he couldn't preach it out, he couldn't teach it out. It's not for him to do it. It's for you to say, come do it, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, God. Help Nobody ever took the time to tell somebody, you know what? Like a good accountant, a good accountant is going to find things that you forgot about. Mm -hmm. They're going to find little foxes yes. that you didn't think was a big deal. Come on. Because those little foxes if left unchecked become big deals. Yes. And they're going to make you, better word, they're going to compel you to do what you need to do to get that right. And to get that even out. And it's painful. The process is painful. But when it's truly zeroed out and everything is even, the accountant says, now go back to the judge and see what they say this time. That's right. And the very one that was saying, you going to jail, is not saying, you know what? Your debt's been satisfied. You're free. God desires to set us free. Because how many of you know, we can't help nobody get free. If we're bound, I say, I'm That's right. Right. Amen. we cannot Amen. help anyone get free if we're bound ourselves. Amen. The enemy's held the church hostage long enough. Yes, Come on. It's time for us to realize that God is calling the true worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. It's a wake up call that went out. Wake up call went out about three and a half weeks ago. Hey, there's been a shift in the spirit. 
There's been a shift in the spirit realm. There's been a shift in your level of sense of urgency. There's been a shift in what I need you to do. I don't need you on the sideline anymore. I don't even need you on the front line anymore. I need you in a place where you're going all out to do the work that I've given you to do. Forget about denomination. Yes. I got brothers that have work of ministry that, that we're in agreement with. I don't care about denominations. Come on, come on. What I care about is the fact that there are souls out there that are hurting. Yes. There are needs out there that need to be met. There are yes. folks out there that are hungry that need to eat. There are orphans out there that need somebody to comfort them. There are widows out there that need to be consoled. There's stuff out there that the word says is out there that we're not meeting and we've got to meet them. And I don't mean the people that are just right around the corner from my house. That's right. That's right. I'm talking about the folks that are way across town. Yes. 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 I'm not talking about a 9 to 5, between 9 to 5 on Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about a call that comes in 3 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. Uh -huh. yes. Down in the hood. Mm -hmm. Saying, call Pastor so and so. Mm -hmm. I need him to come down. I need her to come down. Well, I don't know if I should go over there because you were asked for. That's mm -hmm. right. Again, the call went out. Uh -huh. I need Pastor so and so. Got it. Okay, you need to go to such and such. Okay, Lord, can we talk about this for a minute? I mean, I mean, you understand that's the hood over there, right? And folks got shot. He's like, I need you to go over there. Uh -huh. I mean, really, I mean, I got small kids, and I just don't want. This is what we got to stop. That's right. That's right. We got to stop doing that. Because it's a new day, and God is seeking. God, God is seeking for us. To offer the same measure of sacrifice in our lives mm. that his son offered in his life. Yes, so that we could be impacted and changed. Yes, because in Ephesians it says in the second chapter, verses 14 through 18, I read it from the Amplified because it broke it down beautifully, everything I just said. For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile. Those that are God's chosen people per the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Those that have been engrafted into the family. family. Yes, yes. One family. But just like the war is going on, the Jews don't understand what they're going on. The Gentiles, are, we got all kinds of squabbling here. That's right. We got beef here. We got all kinds of beef. And while this beef is going on, while there's a family squabble, you got people over here that are just going to hell in droves. You got people over here that are not even hearing the gospel because we're so busy beefing over here. Do we have service on Saturday or do we have it on Sunday? Is it Sabbath this day or is it that day? Was Jesus born in December or was he born in April? Is it the Caesarean calendar or is it this calendar? Is it B.C. or is it A.D.? Is it red liturgical color or green liturgical color? Do we start at 11 o'clock? Do we start at 10 o'clock? It doesn't matter what goes on. All that matters is we're preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes, Amen. yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's it. For he himself it. has made us both Jew and Gentile one body and has broken down, destroyed, and abolished the hostile, dividing wall between us. Which implies that that wall is alive, y'all. Yes. Y'all know what that dividing wall is? That's the enemy. That's the tricks and the plans of the enemy. Those are his schemes. That's him doing that nonsense. Come on. Sometimes we got to realize, wait a minute, hold on. If we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing and there's still chaos in the room, that means that there's somebody else in the room. That's right. And instead of us trying to figure out who somebody else is in the room, because it must be somebody in you, That's or right. it must be somebody in me, how about we come together because the word says if any two touch upon anything is agreed. <laughs> come on. Say that. That he's come in the on. midst and he's willing to perform yes. because yes. he's witnessing. Yes. Us being living witnesses. Yes. Come on. So that we can help folks in the situation when they come in the room not have to deal with it. You know what that's called? That's called ministry. Yes. God is calling us to realize that ministry truly begins at home. It begins with us identifying when there's something not right. It begins with us realizing that if we can't come together and touch the degree in prayer, how can we make a difference in somebody else's life? How can we do it? If I'm Baptist and you're Methodist and we're squabbling about this and that and people are going to hell, are we really doing our job? Oh, help us. That's why God is saying, church, I got a problem. Yep. Got a problem with y'all. But here's how we fix the problem. Let me go on. By abolishing in his own crucified flesh, meaning Christ, the enmity or the war that's caused by the law with his decrees and ordinances, which he annulled, that he from the two 
might create in himself, catch this, one new man, one new quality of humanity out of the two. So he's looking to make us all better. Right. He desires to make us all better. That's where the book of Hebrews came from. And the book of Hebrews said, what you have is good, but I'm showing you all this so that you can be better. There's a better way for you to worship. There's a better way for you to fellowship. There's a better way for you to live. There's a better way for you to minister. There's a better way for you to move. And as you do this thing in a better way, what's going to happen is you're going to be better than everybody else. And if you can stay consistent in doing so, when you get to chapter 11, you'll find yourself listed in the Hall of Fame of Faith. Because it's not about what you know. Hallelujah. It's about who you know. That's it. That's it. And God needs us to walk in the fullness of who it is that we know. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. It's not about what you have and what you don't have. Mm -hmm. It's not about who's there and who's not there. Come on. It's about who you know. Do you trust me, God yes, says? God. Do you trust me enough to know that I can use you here, here, and here at the same time? Do you trust me enough to know that even though you don't see the increase, the increase is there more than you can imagine? And do, do you trust me enough to realize that no matter what it looks like, I'm still God and I change us not? Yes, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. What happens is, I go to the end of this passage, mm -hmm. for it's through him that we both, whether far off or near, now have an introduction or equal access. I don't forget. We got equal access now by the Holy Spirit to the Father. Because one yes in your spirit yes, gives the Father by the Holy Spirit mm. access to your heart in every aspect of your life. Thank you. And there are far too many of us that are living outside of God's law uh -huh. of equal access. But can I let you in on a little secret? That's what reconciliation is all about. God desires to reconcile us, to bring us back into a place where, he, where we have access to him. Where we're looked at as equal as it pertains to his children. We'll no longer be outcast. We'll no longer be at war with him. We'll be back in proper standing with him. And that's critical because just like the day of reconciliation is here and just like the day of renewal is here, I got good news for you. The day of revival is here too. Yes, yes. See, like, it, like, like, like every good book, every good action movie, every great story, there's a period that's real, real boring. And the boring period is usually where everything's got to get built and everything's got to get put together. But when you get to the climax, when you get to the climax where everything is coming to a head, that's when you see who's made or what. And when the victor comes out on top, you rejoice. God is letting us know that guess what? We're coming out on top, church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because in our text, Paul is encouraging us. To gain an understanding yes, God. of the spiritual effects of revival mm -hmm. and, and its relationship to eternal life. See, the word tells us that God wants everybody to be saved. He does. And he wants everybody to come to the knowledge of the truth. And what he desires is that all people would hear and understand the gospel so that they can have the opportunity to believe for eternal life. And yes. what happens is that as we do that, there's an exchange that takes place. In exchange for the sins that we have. And give them to him. What he then does is he comes in and he goes back to the account dynamic. He begins to put grace Come on. in our spiritual bank account. Come on. Come he begins on. to put healing Jesus. in our spiritual bank account. He begins to put love in our spiritual bank account and joy in, in our bank account and, and long suffering in our bank account and temperance in our bank account. And, 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 and one day you wake up, it's like, man, it's kind of like, you, you know, when you, when, when you plug your phone in and your phone gets real dim. When it gets to 5% and below, uh -huh. as soon as you plug that bad boy in the source, what's the first thing you're doing? Right. That bad boy lights up like, whoop! Come on. <laughs> okay, we're connected to something now. Yes. Give me about an hour and 35 minutes to come back and check me out. Come on. So I go do what I do when I come back about 45 minutes later because that's what we do. He's like, no, 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 I'm better, but not yet. Don't come back yet. Give me a little more time. Come so on. I go and come back in and say, I told you not to come back yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'll come back. Open up like it's like, see, I told you, look what happened now. I'm 100 percent Go ahead and unplug me now. And you're doing all the same stuff that you were doing, but catch this. Now you're doing it better. Yeah. Now you're doing it faster. Yeah. It's easier to see now. Yeah. 
Because the light is shining brightly. That's what we are. What's what God is designed to do right now. Say, yes, I know y'all got stuff going on, church. Yes, I know I got a problem with you. Yes, I know that you don't unplug me a whole lot of times. But what I want to do is help you understand and realize that everything that you're doing right now is okay because it's already been built into the equation. Because when my son Jesus died, he died once for all time. He yeah. died for every mess up. He died for every mix up. He died for every screw up. He died for every shortcoming. He died for every. He died for every time you missed it. He died for every time you messed up. And all he needs you to do is say yes. Say, Dad, plug me back into the power source. Plug me back into my anointing. Plug me back into my destiny. And when you plug me back into my destiny, something happens on the inside. When revival comes, you look at your hands like they used to say in the church, and they yes. look what? Yes. And I looked at my feet, and they what? Two. They did too. Yes. And I'm running like I never used to run before. Oh. And I'm clapping my hands like I never used to clap them before. Yes. And I'm preaching the word like I never used to preach it before. And I'm getting revelation like I never used to get it before. Yes. Because there's something about exchanging our sins for God's blessings that bring about revival that gives us the capacity to go in the community. Yes, God. And face whatever comes yes, on the home. Yes, Come on. I'd be a liar and a fool to tell you that the work that God has for us to do out there is going to be easy. I'd be a liar and a fool to tell you that every day is going to be a day Come on. where we're going to be rejoicing and victorious. But I'd also be a liar if I told you that every day wouldn't be a day where we can rejoice and give God praise. Come on. Because the word says that everything. Yeah. Give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. But well, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus yeah. concerning you and I. When we find ourselves doing that, now we find ourselves in the right mindset. Yes. Now we're revived because no matter where we go and how much energy we expend, we're not unplugged from the power source. That's when right. I plug my phone into the power source, I can be playing all kinds of games and watching movies and designing stuff or for hours on the end. When I finish and I look at my, my percentage, guess what my percentage is at on my phone? It's still 100%. You know why? I'm still plugged in and never unplugged. Just because we're plugged in, it doesn't mean that we're limited. That's right. The word lets us know that we're to go where he sends us. He's not going to send us 100 miles away. And we only got 10 miles of connection to him. He's not going to send us where he can't reach us. Come on. And God wants us to understand that it's time for us to move, church. Yes, Gone are the days of for us to sitting on the sidelines saying somebody else to do it. Come on. Right. Gone are the days for us wishing that somebody would do it. Gone are the days of us complaining and stopping our foot saying, I wish somebody would do it. God is saying, it's your time now. The time is now. It's a new day. It's time for you to do it. I'll never forget this as long as I live and I'm done. There was a news story on TV about yet another shooting of a young person. And the individual that was being interviewed stopped looking at the reporter and did what they say you're never supposed to do when you're talking to a reporter. And that's breach the third wall. Look directly at the camera. Mm -hmm. They looked directly at the camera and said, my question is this. This is happening in the community. If you look over my shoulder, there's a church right there. If you look across the street, there's a church right there. If you look a block that way, there's a church right there. And two blocks that way, there's a church. Where is a church in this situation? What is a church doing to try to make a difference? Why are the churches all closed six days a week? And the one day that they are open, a difference is made. We need the church to do something. God is asking us, where is the church today? It's a new day. Where's the church? Thank you, God. Time is out for you standing on the sideline. Yes, God. When the, where the reinforcements are? Where are the reinforcements? When's my ship coming in? When's my ship coming in? Guess what? You're the Queen Mary. Get out there and make a difference. This is what God is calling us to yes, do. God. He's calling us to do it because 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 says, as I finish and we stand, in an acceptable time, I've heard you. In the day of salvation, I've helped you. Yes. Behold, now, is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. As we stand all over the sanctuary church, it's a new day. Hallelujah. And God is calling us in this new day to do a new thing. A new thing is not always describable. A new thing doesn't always have all the answers because it's new. But what happens is that new thing is designed to reach areas that nobody else has been able to reach. 
God has given us these territories and he's given us for a reason. Hallelujah. And it's in this season that God is calling us to activate every resource that he's entrusted to us because as we become good stewards over what he's entrusted to us, guess what? He's going to give us more. Yes. But it starts with us. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here tonight and you realize that indeed it's a new day, but you feel like you're on the outside looking in. And you desire to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Again, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and your desire is to come to know him as such, if you raise your hand where you are in the sanctuary, let us pray the prayer of faith with you. Is there one? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Praise God. Praise God. If you're here tonight, and everybody here, by their actions, is saved, and we praise God for that. Thank you, Jesus. One of the things that we do as LW. Living Witness Ministries has been given a mandate to go into all the world and reach the same with the life-giving word. In this phase of our development, God is doing so through the ushering in of the Abandon No More initiative. Through this campaign, God is using Living Witness Ministries to reach the whole man in major urban communities in order to help them realize and see that God has not forgotten them and neither has his church. Our first endeavor in this initiative is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin by obtaining a ministry campus in the Hampton Heights neighborhood. With this ministry campus, we're looking to establish holistic programs that impact every sector of the community, including the Living Witness Christian Academy, the a and Neighborhood Watch Program, the Feed My Sheep Community Food Pantry, the Provision Community Center and Beds Program, the a and Economic Empowerment and Wealth Center, the Kirkendall Community Health Center, the a and Community Beautification Campaign, and the Lark and Lee Community Service Program. Won't you help us in our endeavor to practically reach this portion of the world with the life-giving word? Please sow into Living Witness Ministries Capital Building Fund. You can do so through our existing modes of giving, including Cash App at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020, Tithely or Givelify at Living Witness Ministries LaGrange, Illinois, or by mail at P.O. Box 250769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin 53225. Please do your part as the Lord leads you to help us acquire this property so that we can be the blessing that God has called us to be in Milwaukee, but more importantly, so that we can fulfill our God-given mandate in this phase of ministry to possess the land in Milwaukee, one soul at a time, for God's glory. Thank you in advance for your support, and God bless. We pray you were blessed by today's message and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can write to us at P.O. Box 250-769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53225. Again, that's P.O. Box 250-769, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53225. You can also reach us by phone at area code 414 414- 909-0133. That's area code 404-909-0133. You can also email us at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two witness at gmail.com. To learn more about Living Witness Ministries online, visit us at www.livingwitnessministries.org. Until next time, continue to live your life as a living witness. God bless.